Hi everyone, welcome to Barker's Barbecue. Today we're cooking a porchetta crackle roast. All right, let's talk pork. So the porchetta is, uh, is a rolled pork belly roast with the crackle skin around the outside. So that's what you really want to make sure you nail on this, right? They've become one of my absolute favorite things to cook at Christmas because you can do them in a smoker and you can also do them in the oven if you need to as well. Fire ban or something like that. Often that happens at Christmas time to us over here in Perth, Western Australia. You've still got that second option of chucking them in the, in the oven. So I absolutely love porchetta roasts and I want you to try one as well. The skin crackle is amazing, the flavor's amazing. Uh, it's stuffed with a mixture of different herbs and spices, including the likes of fennel, citrus, things like that. The world is really your oyster in that regard. You can make them in any way you want. Now, one of the main things you really need to nail on a porchetta to make it as best as possible is the skin, of course. You want that skin to be beautiful, light, airy. You don't want that teeth breaking crackle. Um, I always try and avoid that if I can. And the way I do that is uh, two main ways. Drying the skin appropriately and uh, making sure you have super high heat in the cooker, at least 250 Celsius. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things today to help to dry the skin properly and to help prep the skin as well because uh, there's a second option that needs to be done there. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is to prick the skin. When you're cooking for pork crackle roast, personally, um, I don't like to score these. I prefer to use this little gadget here. This thing is called a jacquard, basically a pork skin pricker. So these little spikes on the end poke tiny little holes across the skin. That's the first thing you want to do on this. These are about $7 on eBay. A great thing to have in your arsenal for, um, for, for, for ensuring you get that beautiful pork crackle skin. Okay, you want to work your way across all the parts with the skin, all right? So. Okay, little holes all over the skin now. The next stage is to salt it as much as you possibly can. And when I say as much as you possibly can, I mean as much as you possibly can. Get as much salt as you can to stick to that skin. One of the other things as well uh, is you need to sit this in the fridge just like this on an open tray. And that's the setup I have. The important part is you put it in the fridge open just like this. You need the air circulation in the fridge to dry that skin. And also after a couple of hours of its first stint in the fridge, grab a bit of paper towel and press it onto the salt because that's gonna draw a lot of the first initial moisture out. Once you've done that, leave it in the fridge. I like to ideally leave these in the fridge for at least two days. We're gonna leave this in the fridge open like this that whole time to allow that skin to properly dry. A Couple of other points I'd like to make as well. If you get your pork from your butcher as opposed to getting it from the likes of Coles and Woolies where it's been vac packed, the skin has a lot less moisture if you get it from the butcher because it's been hanging in their, in their refrigerator. The skin has not had the chance to absorb a ton of moisture like it would in a vac pack from the likes of Coles and Woolies. If it's not been in a vac seal, you're already a little bit ahead of the game. You'll see that when you get it fresh from the butcher or Coles or wherever, you'll see that the skin is quite soft and pliable. You'll know that the skin is adequately dried properly when it becomes hard to the tap. So you'll see what I mean. I'm gonna show you a little bit later on in the video what I mean. This is going straight in the fridge and we'll see you in a couple of days. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm gonna bring you guys in for a closer look now to see what I mean about, uh, about how the skin should look when it's done. Alrighty, so before we salted this, it was quite, uh, it was quite loose and um, it was not, you know, you, you, you could press it and it would sort of move quite easily. Um, now it's quite firm to the tap. It's a lot stiffer than it was before. You want that stiffness on the skin. That's what's really gonna give you the crackle that you want. If it's still very loose and pliable, then you're gonna really struggle with that crackle there. Now we're gonna put this aside and get our Weber set up. So the other crucial thing about nailing crackle is super high heat. We're gonna be setting our Weber up today, ideally aiming for a minimum of 250 degrees Celsius. The start of the cook is where I like to establish the crackle and then let the cook carry on and keep the crackle going um, as the meat comes up to the temperature that's desired. So I'll bring you over and we'll have a look at the Weber setup that we're going with today and then we'll get it lit. All right, so we are cooking this Weber rotisserie style today using the Weber rotisserie kit. We have set up two baskets on the far sides of the Weber, sort of old school classic Weber roast style. And we're gonna have our pork spinning in the middle section here. We're using lump charcoal today as well. You can certainly use briquettes uh, if you like. Uh, I prefer to use lump charcoal because I feel it does have a bit more scope to get a little hotter. 
Um, so we've got our charcoal chimney ready to go here and some fire lighters set up underneath it. So we're going to get those lit and get this whole charcoal chimney going. I want as much charcoal lit as possible. Like I say, I want this super hot towards the start of the cook. And then later on, we can certainly bring the temperature down just to let the meat come up because the crackle is what we want to establish nice and early. So let's get this lit. All right, we're gonna let our coals continue to catch for a little bit longer in the open like this. And while we're doing that, let's get the meat on the spike. All right, make sure you do wipe off all of the salt that we had on there. It's certainly okay to leave a bit on there, of course, but uh, yeah, you wanna get rid of the bulk of it, otherwise the crackle's gonna be horrible. All right, let's get it on the spike. So you roughly wanna find where the center is. Find the center with these notches. You know where you, know where you need to situate your first prong. Perfect. Same on this side, slide this one on. Oh, perfect, let's get it in. Switch it on. And off we go, so now you want to keep this lid on for as long as you can, um, to start with especially. Don't be lifting the lid every five minutes to check and see if the crackle's forming. You need to keep as much of the heat in there as possible for that first 20, 30 minutes of the cook. You want to be aiming for temperatures of at least 250 degrees Celsius, like I mentioned, especially for the start of the cook. Then they can certainly come down later on, no sweat. You just need as much heat as possible in there to form that crackle to start with. Oh, and of course, all vents wide open for this one. Alrighty, so let's do a temp check. We're five minutes in and we're sitting about 265 degrees Celsius, which is ideal. Just to let you know, literally the second I finished filming the last, um, the last bit, the heavens opened and completely soaked my full set area. So I had to drag the Weber over out of the rain and um, I opened it up as well and just got my charcoal starter in there just to sort of really ramp it up a bit. But, um, but yeah, nothing like a challenge, eh? <laughs> uh. Literally the second I finished filming, boom, torrent. Anyway, everything's back together now. We've got a dry tablecloth. Let's check things. We're sitting at the 45 minute mark now, and um, I've kept the lid down for the, for the vast majority of it. Just had a little peek a moment ago, and uh, we're gonna give you guys a look now. Temp wise, we're sitting at 220 Celsius, uh, wanting to keep as much of that uh, heat in there as we possibly can. All right, super quick peek, let's have a look. That crackle is establishing itself really nicely. Pretty happy with how that's looking. Uh, we're gonna get the lid right back on now because we're gonna be a little while away from that, from the um, internal temperature. All right, so when you heard me mention internal temperature before, we're looking to go with an internal temperature of about 185 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the method that I used to come second in a porchetta or a pork on the spit competition that was recently held and uh, was really, really happy with the level of tenderness that we got at that 185 marks. But uh, we're sitting at 45 minutes now. I'm really happy with how the crackle's looking. We're just gonna let it, oh, this weather, man. <laughs> yes, so we're gonna let it continue and uh, we're gonna probably check in another half hour or so, maybe another 45 minutes. Just let it keep doing its thing and keep that lid on. All right, everyone, we are 90 minutes into the cook now. Things have been going pretty well. It's been sitting around about sort of 200 Celsius. Uh, for the last bit, maybe just a bit under, which is perfectly fine. The crackle's nice and established, but uh, we just want to get that meat up to 185 Fahrenheit. So let's have a look, eh? All right, let's make this nice and quick. Crackle is looking great. Nice and hard, just what I'm looking for. Let's have a look at what that meat's sitting at. So you want to you want to measure as close to the uh, spike as you can, just because that's right, obviously right in the center. We're sitting at 177, so we're so close. We're about probably another 10 minutes away. 179 in the middle there, great, cool. Let's get the lid back on, probably 10, 15 minutes and then we're there. All right, we've hit an hour and 45 minutes and we're done, so let's have a look. Would you have a look at that? Have a look at that. Ha. Oh. good lord.
All right, everyone, this has been sitting out on the cutting board for about five minutes or so. I think we're ready to cut into this and see how we've gone. Finishing temperature for this one, like I say, is around 185 uh, Fahrenheit, internal temperature. Let's cut into this and see how we're looking. All right, everyone, just be mindful of that string under there, of course. Chop that off, pull that round. Check this out. Absolutely magic. And would you look at that? I'm over the moon with that. It's beautifully, beautifully moist. Fat's looking delicious. Everything's rendered really nicely as well. Very, very happy with that. Let's give it the old crunch test, hey? Look at that crackle. Beautiful. This is how I like to present it. Beautiful little rings of pork cheddar, pork belly roast, each with their own little layer of crackle on them as well. Exactly the same method that I used to come second with Ribrax Barbecue at Shidlow Barbecue Festival a couple of weeks back. I'm absolutely over the moon with that. Oh wow. Well. <laughs> Gotta be happy with that. Well, that just about wraps up the video today, guys, on the pork head crackle roast. I really hope you got something out of it. You can certainly apply the same techniques to the skin for your sort of normal crackle roasts and have the same kind of outcome. Like I say, you want that skin to be hard to the tap and much more stiff than you get it from the butcher or the bag, and also that high heat. So we got away with it today with, uh, you know, temperatures of sub 250, so, you know, good. 220, 220 is all right. If I hadn't have dried the skin that way and the temp was sitting at 220 the whole time, I doubt we would have had the result we would have had today. All these little things I'm telling you are little one percenters to help you get there. If you do them all right, then you'll have a much better shot at nailing that crackle every time. But if you like what you saw today, please like the video. That really helps me out. Please go ahead and tap that for us. Also, while you're there, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you're notified every single time I do a video, you'll be the first to know. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you next time.